say that again so people can hear me. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, welcome to here in Bethel. It's great to see the place, well, really full, isn't it? And there's more people coming in at the back, which is lovely to see. And for those at home who are still watching, or maybe watching later on in the day, it's great to have you here. Not here, but with us, if you know what I mean. And it's lovely to have Rob and Jill and the family here uh, this morning, some of the family. And uh, yeah, we'll be a bit teary-eyed at the end, won't we? So uh, but it's lovely to have you here with us. I think somebody's teary-eyed already, so we won't mention that anymore, shall we? So uh, but it's lovely to have you here with us this morning as we worship God together. Uh, and let's remember that's why we're here. We're here to worship God and to focus our hearts and our minds and our thoughts on Him. And all that we do this morning is, is for His glory and to, to worship Him. Uh, as we sing together, as we pray together, it's all to, to lead us to Him. And uh, so we pray that God will do that this morning and be with us and speak to us this morning. Just a couple of updates on um, prayer requests. Things move so quickly, uh, particularly if you're Graham Dyke. Maybe they don't move so, so quickly, but the minute you put out in the newsletter that he's in one hospital, then it gets moved. So um, I, we got a message last night to say Graham has now been moved to Broad Green Hospital, um, and uh, hopefully he'll settle soon there. And uh, so please, he's getting his phone set, sorted out. He's had a few problems with that. But if you, if you want to give him a call this week and uh, encourage him, then please do so and continue to pray for him. Continue to pray for Brenda as well, and uh, for Jackie that we, uh, we heard yesterday uh, is in hospital uh, with COVID and obviously has got underlying health conditions as well. So please pray for her and the family, uh, for her husband Derek and Louisa and Florence and, and the rest of the family, so please pray for them. Tonight we've got Peter Lawrence with us, and he's bringing God's word to us and we look forward to that as well. And then we meet on Wednesday for our midweek meeting here at Bethel. And uh, we'll be going out on Zoom as well for the, the few people who can't make it uh, here to Bethel. So uh, if, that's one of, if, if you can't make it, then it will be available on Zoom um, on Wednesday evening. Exciting week this week, uh, Holiday Bible Club. More exciting than usual because we haven't had one for two years. And, um, oh, you know, it's got loads of kids here, but I'm not going to tell you any more about that. I'm going to ask Gail to come up and speak about that. Um, and just one thing before we finish, and uh, is to say that um, we're not passing an offering plate around at the moment, um, but there are offering plates at the back and at the exit. If you want to make use of those either on your way in or on the way out, then please do so. And that would be much appreciated. Thanks, Gary. Good morning, everyone. So we've got a really exciting week ahead. Um, really looking forward to our holiday Bible club. We missed it last year. We really, really did miss having the children. So this week, looking at it, we've got 27 helpers, and that's 18 and above. We've got 18 young leaders, so they really need a lot of prayer. We're putting a lot of pressure on them this year. We really want to utilise them. And they've got a lot of skills there, and we need to use them. And we've got about 85 kids. It feels like it's changing minute by minute. We're getting messages here and there. Can this child come? Will this child can't come? Uh, but pray for them children. So we don't know what it's about. It's, it's a week that we bring all the children in the local area. Um, in the mornings we tend to do a bit of devotion time. We have den time, we have quizzes, we have songs. And then in the afternoon, um, half the group goes next door and we play games and then we swap over and if you're elected here, you do a craft um, and lots of other exciting activities. On the Wednesday, we go to the beach for most of the day. Um, that's a really good day. So our prayer points um, is for Josh as he leads our devotions in the week. We pray that the children's hearts are open to the words. Some of these children haven't been to the church for like over two years. Um, so they're quite new to them. Um, they haven't been to some of the activities that they would normally come to. Um, so we'll be strange to them, whereas normally they come and they know us. Um, it'll be slightly different this year. Pray for team unity and strength as we get through the week because it does get tiring. It's a lot of work. Um, but it is good. Pray for, I say, the young leaders. Um, I say they're going to do a lot of work. They're leading the music group, they're doing the IT for us, and they're leading some of the helping some of the groups. Um, so pray for them. And pray that on the and the after um, on the Bible Club that we'll use them skills that they've got. Um, pray for safety in the week. And um, also we have a question for some of the some of the leaders who've got young children who are able to come because it's after age five. 
took his, he's headed up our crash. Um, pray for those that want to say they also hear the gospel. Thanks a lot. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be here, isn't it? I don't know what you, it is, by the way, just in case you weren't too sure. Uh, a few people, oh, I don't know, really, yes. Um, you know, in the, I don't know about you, but Sunday morning sometimes, you, you think, right, Saturday night, okay, I'm going to get up, Sunday morning's going to be peaceful, I'm going to glide to church, it's going to be amazing, and then you wake up and it's chaos, yeah? And, um, and so it's always good, just before we start our service, I love to spend some time just still in our hearts. And so I'd love for us to do that now. Let's still our hearts. Let's remind ourselves why we are here at church. We're here to worship the living God. We're here together as brothers and sisters in Christ, an eternal family through what Jesus has done for us. Psalm 97 says this, the Lord reigns let the earth rejoice. Let the coastlands be glad. Cloud and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and he burns up his adversaries all around. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all people see his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame, who make their boast in worthless idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of the judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. <coughs> oh, you who love the Lord, hate evil. He perseveres, uh, preserves sorry, the lives of his saints. He delivers them from the hands of the wicked. Light is sown for, righteous, for the righteous, the joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O oh, you righteous, and give thanks to him. Um, give thanks to his holy name. Let's pray together. Almighty God, the one who um, has light, who is clothed in inapproachable light. Father, for you, we, we can't even come close to you because of your glory and your might, as people did in the Old Testament. They fell down on their faces, fearful that they were dead men, because they recognized just who you are and who they are. You are the creator God. You are pure. You are holy. You are sovereign. Everything you do is right, Lord. Every judgment you make, a judgment you make is just and true. And Lord, we are your creation. And Lord, we know that we're sinful men and women. But hallelujah. Praise be to God that he sent his son to die for us. Lord, we thank you that this morning for many of us, we're here today worshipping you as forgiven people. Of people who no longer have that judgment, that wages of sin being death hanging over us. But in fact, Lord, that we've been clothed in your righteousness. Lord, we worship you. We exalt you. We praise you. We, we sing and we dance for joy knowing how good you are and how worthy you are of every breath that we have. So Lord, we ask this morning that you would indeed be glorified, that all of our eyes would be fixed upon you. And Father, we pray that your kingdom would be built this morning. Lord, be in all that happens today, for we want nothing else but to see your name being proclaimed. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Well, let's stand and let's sing a great song of praise this morning. Our song's been picked by Rob and Jill. Is that right? Mainly Jill? Yeah, mainly Jill. Okay, Rob. Uh, Rob's picked our songs this morning. And uh, our first one is, Who was hold the, Who's held the oceans in his hands? And you know in the, in the chorus it says this, Behold our God seated on the throne. As we continually 
fix our eyes on God. Let's, let's have that image uh, in our minds that our God is seated on the throne and worthy of all of our praise. Let's stand and let's raise the roof together. <clears throat>
one, don't do it with the others as well, I didn't next one. Anyway, Rob, Jill. It was in October of 2014 that Bethel uh, members invited Rob to be the next pastor of the church. Uh, Rob commenced his ministry in the November. He was that eager, only four weeks later. And as a sign that we wanted to keep him, um, we had his induction in January 2015. Things happened really, really quickly. You know, God has a way of drawing a pastor and a church together. It's always for a reason of his own choosing. And if you look carefully down the history of Bethel, you can see that God always answers the prayers of his people when they come to him and ask him to lead us to the man of his choosing. And many of you can go a lot further back than I can. I can go five pastors, including Rob. Some of you can go six, seven, or eight. Uh, uh, you know, and um, you've probably got more experience than me. But in the seven years, or almost seven years, that Rob and Jill have been with us, they've served God here. And God has used them to nudge us, to encourage us, to challenge us in a vast number of ways. So this short word of thanks, Rob, it's not meant to be a retrospective of the whole of your ministry. I'm just going to try and get the grey cells moving, yours as well as mine, and remind you of some of the things that have happened on Rob's watch. You remember that he's always had a heart for school's work. And it wasn't long before the idea of a youth and schools work, which we nobody talked about in the past, uh, came forward with more strength. And in fact, he'd had his feet for, under the desk for barely nine months when the matter was discussed at the church business meeting. The result, he was sitting next to me here. <laughs> Josh was appointed uh, a while later. He started his role in September 2016. And as a result, just listen to this list now. You probably think of God's schools worker. Uh, Rob and Josh together have, uh, have put their minds and, and gifts together. This is a list of the schools that we've reached in that time. St. Margaret's, Archie's, Lister Drive, St. Hilda's, St. Francis of Assisi, Halewood Church of England, Croxton Primary, Monkstown, St. Mary's College, Blue Coat, the Prudential Unit in Garston, St. Lawrence's Primary, West Derby and Gladys Street, and there's probably a couple that have been missed out there. Literally thousands of children and young people in those schools are impacted by the gospel on a regular basis. Then there's our relationship with Croxton. And again, Bethel and Croxton have worked together in the gospel for many years, but it was under Rob's ministry that these links were strengthened. Some members of Bethel committed themselves to serving the Lord at Croxton, on a regular basis and continue to do so. Do you remember Cafe Church? Yeah, four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, just when you try to have a snooze, and we went down to Croxton and uh, uh, we saw people there that wouldn't normally come to a uh, church service. And Croxton has seen some growth as it seeks to serve the community the way it is. And that word community is another one of the keys to Rob's ministry among us in Bethel, I think we all, we all agree. As well as working with the schools and taking lessons and assemblies, other practical opportunities were recognised and addressed. So, encouraged by Rob, the work providing food parcels to needy families started. Christmases, first of all, in particular, but also through other times of need. And even now, uh, this summer, food parcels still going out on a regular basis to, to those who are in need at a difficult time. Allied to this, calls for the community ministry started, and the Here to Listen ministry started, offering an ear to those who simply needed to talk. Bethel provided help down in uh, the homeless outreach work in the city centre on a Sunday. And while these ministries weren't led by Rob, they sprang out of something that I think that God had used him to bring to the fore here at Bethel, in a different way than it had before putting legs, if you like, on our faith and showing our love for God by loving those around us. There were missions too. Home missions took place, Reach Mark 2, uh, and Wyatt Wynn, you remember Wyatt with his many band of guys from the USA who came over on a couple of occasions, engaging in evangelism, again going into schools, 
practical help, particularly at Croxton, where they did a, a lot of refurbishment work. But there were overseas missions as well. Uh, long time friendships and burdens were born with the baby centre in Kenya and with the uh, Moldova trip. And the Kenyan trip opened the eyes of many to, to what was going on in that part of Africa and it's impacted some of those people who went in a very real and lasting way. Of course, Covid scuppered the return to Kenya, but God willing it's only postponed, not cancelled. And to help support these initiatives, the Overseas Mission Fund was set up to help to fund not only these, but future missions as well, as our eyes were turned out, not just in the community, but to the utmost parts of the earth. Here at Bethel, Rob ran a number of answering the big questions courses for those who were seeking, or those who were just struggling with the answers that we get often get, uh, sorry, the questions that we often get asked as Christians, the difficult things that we have to be ready to answer. And then there was Men to Men, the ministry that we talked about for a number of years, but again, it got going under Rob's um, uh, patronage, tutelage, on his watch, whatever. It was an opportunity for men to bring friends along uh, to a meeting that was unlike any other. I think at one point we had a, a professor of pharmacology, and then a couple of months later we had a, a gang of Christian bodybuilders. That could only have happened under Rob's watch. <laughs> I can't imagine it happening anywhere else. How to get the children onto the platform to sing? <laughs> That's how. Probably out of date by now. We'll check later on. <laughs> Harry Bow. Uh, we, we can't think of Rob without thinking of Harry Bow. And while we're on commercial enterprises, Costa. <laughs> the, the Costa of the um, <laughs> Opposite the Jolly Miller, there. That's going to go out of business <laughs> because Rob, quite often, you may have been one of the people that was privileged to spend some time on Galate, putting the world to rights, or more importantly, the things that were going on in your life. Things that really probably haven't happened in that way before. Of course, the last 17 months of Rob and Jill's time with us have been marked by the ongoing COVID situation which has taken different tolls on many of them. In the First World War, I believe that the soldiers thought that they were going to be home by Christmas 1914, and there was a bit of a sense of that for us as well. Is this going to mess us around for a month, do you think, anybody? Maybe six weeks? Will we all be back to normal by July 2020? I remember that Deacon's meeting where we met and tried to work out what we could do to enable ministry to continue. We found a camera and some old video editing software. Josh cobbled together some dubious studio lighting <laughs> with bits of tin foil and all sorts of wires. And on the 21st of March, 2020, Phil, Josh, Rob and I met in our back room to recall, wash some feet in love. Rob's first pandemic message. That was the only time there was an audience of more than one. The following week, it was just Rob and me due to restrictions that have been introduced. We shared a lot of time together over those 15 months or so of doing COVID. And I probably remember it fondly and had nightmares at the same time. <laughs> I'm still going to do the outtakes if uh, I can find all the links where we uh, got it wrong. If somebody would like to go onto YouTube, please, for me today, there's, there's something that's stopping me from sleeping. That first message, Wash Some Feet in Love, which was just so for the time. That's been watched now 99 times, <laughs> according to YouTube. Can somebody go on to YouTube today and watch it, please? <laughs> and let's just have around 1,000. <laughs> Many people who have never set foot in Bethel or any other church for that matter tuned in regularly and heard the gospel preached. And we were thankful for the way that Rob was able to adapt so quickly from doing what he does best and what he likes doing, you know, the, uh, the cheeky smile, uh, the repartee, looking in people's eyes for a bit of feedback and asking questions and telling us what the answer is. He had to change from all of that to staring into the lens of a camera in our back room. And he did it. 
straight away, and they did it well. And we thank you for that, God. Three times a week, we had to record those messages. And it was during this 17-month period that I had, we had what I think was our first church day of fasting and prayer. Do you know, we must do that again. We must. But although Rob's time with us has come to an end while the shadow of the pandemic is still hanging over us, his ministry is not going to be defined by those 17 months. It's by all those other things that we've mentioned earlier. I'm sure that eternity will testify to lives saved, backsliders restored, strugglers being encouraged. And as in any church, there have been births, dedications, new births, baptisms, marriages, and funerals, as some have gone on to their forever home with the Lord. All of these things, along with those hundreds of sermons and prayer meetings and visits and one-to-ones, have been done not just with that cheeky smile with a dimple, but in the strength of God and only for his glory. Although Rob's been at the helm while they were done, this is the Lord's doing, and it's marvellous in our eyes. And there's other work in progress, and there's more, so you say. The refresh of the home groups, which has been talked about for how many years, I don't know, but it's going to be started in October, with that new format, which you'll hear about over these coming weeks. The need for a third work, which thanks very much Rob, means we have to find a second one for us. <laughs> so, and finally, we thank God for bringing us together on the journey. We see his hand upon your lives, and we want you to know that God has used you to touch our lives and the mission. So go on to whatever is next with our thanks, our prayers, and our blessings. Now, now, there's something on the next.
for you know the plans you have for them. Plans to prosper them and to use them, Lord. And we just pray as they go out into the next step you've got planned for them, Lord, that many souls will come to salvation. We thank you for both of them, Lord. We thank you for their family. We pray you guard them, keep them, watch over them. <laughs> I haven't uh, I am I haven't prepared anything to say. I was just I was just thinking I was walking down the hill before I got over. What one word could describe my seven years here? The word that came to mind was uh, togetherness. We've been together. We've been together in the work of the King, the Lord Jesus. It's been my privilege just to get alongside and just to be with you, to be with you in baptism, many of you, to be with you in marriage, <laughs> we've been quite a few marriages and that's been joyous, to be with you when you've lost loved ones, as Brian said, as we've promoted to glory, and it's been my privilege to, to bring God's word in those situations. togetherness there as well, a unity in the gospel brought about by the work of the Holy Spirit. It's his spirit that we listen to and are guided by. The group of men who I've served alongside in the effort, it's fellas, it's been a, a real privilege. You've loved me and I've tried to love you back. <laughs> You've always been there for me. We've never, ever in the seven years had a crossword. Every single deacon's meeting that I can remember has always been a togetherness. And also for this fellow here, he's a, he's, he's a star, you know, and he's very humble, and he loves the Lord, and he serves the Lord so well in the schools and amongst the kids here. So yeah, that's what I remember about Bethel, just being together. And now we, we you know, it's, 
we know that we're being called to uh, another place. And, you know, I am together with the Lord and Jill's together with the Lord on this. But we're going to be going to a church that, that I helped start, actually, in Ellesmere in Shropshire. For those who don't know, I used to minister in Shropshire um, from 2003 to, to 2009. And, and from when Baptist Church, we planted a, a house group in Ellesmere and I led that and uh, since then the church has grown and it became a church, it got established as a church and that was a church of, in Ellesmere of over 100 people and Jill and I are going to go and serve there and the churches are still praying through what exactly that's going to look like but even if it's just as, a, as an elder and, and serving in the ice cream shop that they've got there and, and, and preaching, I'm happy to do that but we're trusted in the Lord but for a few months we're going to be taking a sabbatical. I wasn't a great believer in sabbaticals until COVID hit. <laughs> but I think, you know, over the 20 years that I've been in ministry, um, I think it's, it's good and right that we take a few months off. So we'll be leaving, the leaving I'm nearly going to sing a song, the leaving of Liverpool. We'll be leaving um, in uh, mid-October, we hope. We've got a house, you know, a rental house in in Ellesmere, and again, that's of the Lord. If I told you the story, you'd see that it's of the Lord. So, yeah, so we'll be going. But you know, let me let me tell you how much I love you, and it's a genuine love. I'm looking out. And you haven't, you haven't forgotten it, well done. Kids and uh, Sunday school age, you're able to head out now. If there's any really little ones, so three and under, there's a crash room as well. 
And we'll see you guys later on. We'll be praying for you in a second once you've gone. Good stuff. Well, we're going to stand as a church again, and we're going to sing, Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Another fantastic song that declares the glory of God. Have your Bible, please turn to Acts chapter 4. We're going to be reading verses 1 to 22. 
And uh, as you get ready for us, let's, let's pray for the children as well as they head out too. Let's pray. For endless days we will sing your praise. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, our oh God. How precious it is, Lord, to be able to call you our God. What a gift to be drawn into your family, to be brought near to your throne. We don't deserve it, Lord. We could never earn it. It's all a gift from you. How precious you are, Lord. How good you are to us. What a great sacrifice for us upon that cross. What a price to be paid. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for many of us that you've opened our eyes to these truths, to trust in you already. And Lord, we pray as your word is, is read now, and as it's preached upon in a short time, Lord, would you move in power? Holy Spirit, would you take these words and would you bring them to life in our lives? For those of us who've not yet trusted in you, Lord, would you do a miracle in our lives this morning? Lord, would you open our eyes and help us to, to see the truth, to trust in you, Lord? And Lord, we long the same for our children and our babies as well. And so, Lord, as they go off to Sunday school now and as the little ones head out to crash, Father, we thank you for each and every little life. Thank you for every family represented. Father, we pray that you would indeed speak to those young hearts, even this morning, through the games, through the quizzes, through the stories, through the teaching, through the songs. Father, would you save them at an early age? Lord, would they be men and women of faith who will indeed rise up and take your gospel forwards and be known as men and women who continually praise your name? For we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. The reading this morning is from the New Testament and it's from Acts chapter 4. Common men, they were astonished, 
and they recognise that they have been with Jesus. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to leave the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do with this man? For what a notable sign has been performed through them is evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that it may be spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in his name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you, rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all were praising God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. Amen. Thank you, Phyllis. Our song before Rob comes up and speaks is 10,000 Reasons. And uh, many years ago, um, I went to church on holiday. And it was a church on the beach, which was a little bit novel, to be fair. And um, so we turned up. And um, in true form, Sarah and I kind of were pushing time. And we arrived as the guy was playing 10,000 Reasons. And everyone's sitting on these deck chairs singing. And as he, as he said, 10,000 Reasons then this sea turtle just popped up behind him and kind of crested on the sea. And at that point I was like, 10,001 reasons to sing. <laughs> it didn't quite fit. God's glory is on display all around. And as believers, we should have our eyes open in wonder, shouldn't we? And see all of the many, many reasons, far more than 10,000 to sing God's praise. Let's stand and sing together. And then Rob, it's over to you. <coughs> Yeah. 
Let's pray together. Father, what we've just sung there, it is our desire to, to bless you with our souls and to worship your holy name. We do thank you for your word. We do thank you that you speak. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is here. So lead us, O oh Lord. Lead us in your truth. And let us worship you aright. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Jesus had risen. He'd been crucified for you and I. But he said he would rise on the third day, and he did. Hallelujah. He'd risen. And he'd spoken to, to many, hundreds of people who'd seen him. And he'd ministered to him over those 40 days. But now the 40 days were up, and he was about to ascend to heaven. And in that moment, there were words said. Powerful words. Words that his disciples would never forget. Words that they would take to heart. Words that would cause them to go and do what he was calling, commanding them to do. In Acts chapter 1, Dr. Luke, he wrote those words down. Someone, let me just read one verse to you. Jesus said, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You will be my witnesses. So what is a witness? Because that's what we're called to be. A witness, well, it's a judicial term. It's like you're in court and people are watching your lives. They're making judgments about you. They're watching your, the way you live and they're listening to your words and you're witnessing with who you are in Christ. You know, seeing Reza and Rashid at the, at the back there, Paul and I recently had the privilege of going to court. We weren't the accused. Unfortunately, they were. They were, they were having to witness to their Christian faith in order for them not to be sent back to a country that would execute them for their faith. So Paul and I were on Zoom. How things have changed during COVID. And the judge was there and he was looking at us and listening to our words and he was making a judgment on our testimony about Reza and Mashid. And thankfully, he made the right judgment. And they have been granted asylum. That's still a case, isn't it? Yeah, hallelujah, praise the Lord for that. But the judge was watching us, people watch us. We're witnesses for Christ. The words that we say, our actions all should point to him. And this is what Jesus is saying, you will be my witnesses. It's a challenge, isn't it? Because witnessing is often very difficult. See, the, the devil, our enemy, the enemy of our souls, we have an enemy. He would stop you opening your mouth. He would stop you doing acts of love because he hates anything to do with Christ and he hates us witnessing. So he'll try and stop you. He'll either persecute you as he does in Iran and in Afghanistan to keep your mouth shut or he'll seduce you as he does in the West with the trinkets of our time, with our Instagram life, our material things that will, that will cause us to speak often of them and desire them more than we desire the Christ who gives us life. And that will stop us often from talking about him. The enemy would have us be quiet. And not speak of Jesus to our friends and our families and our colleagues and the community. So it can be difficult. It was difficult for Peter and John in, in, in the passage that, that Phyllis so wonderfully read. She's a great reader, isn't she? Where's she gone? Where are you, Phyllis? Where are you? Oh, she's at the back there. She's going, oh, no, you are. It's just 
Peter and John were, were just bold, weren't they? And, and they'd been to the temple to pray three times, three hours a day. Three hours a day. Some of us only managed three minutes, if that. But they, to the te- they went to the temple, nine, twelve, and three. And they'd healed the man, hadn't he, who'd been lame from birth at the beautiful gate. And they said, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And they gave the honor and the glory to Jesus. And he got up and he walked. And they were all going, whoa, because they all knew the fella, because he was always at the beautiful gate. But he'd risen from, not risen from the dead, but he'd risen, he'd walking. So they went into the, they went into the temple and they were all at them, what, what happened, what happened, what happened? And they said, you know, we, this is all because of Jesus the risen Jesus, and they started to preach about Jesus, and because they were preaching about Jesus, the Sadducees, who didn't believe in the resurrection, they had them arrested. And they were put in jail overnight. And then the next day, they were taken before the ruling council, the Sanhedrin, the same, I better stay where I am, because it's on camera, keep on, you know me, I like to walk about, but but we're on camera, aren't we? The Sanhedrin, the same ruling council, that had put Jesus to death, through Pilate and Herod. They, had, they held sway over their lives and they were brought before them. So would they shy away from witnessing? No. You see, they were qualified, and that's the first point, they were qualified to speak as witnesses. Secondly, they were compelled to speak, they were commanded to speak, and thirdly, They were prayerfully reliant. There were people praying for them while they were stood before the Sanhedrin. So they were qualified to witness. So what are the qualifications for witnessing? Well, let me just read again. Let me read again just the first part of that passage. So follow the passage in verses 5 to 13 and see if you can spot what qualified Peter and John to speak On the next day, their rulers and elders, verse 5, and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and all were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. So the ruling council, in in Liverpool terms, were gobsmacked by the words of these fellas. These are, they're just fishermen. They've got no formal education like we have. They've got no theological training. We're astonished. Fishermen. They hadn't been to school. They may well have been illiterate, because many of them were. And yet they spoke with passion and with boldness. So what qualified them to witness? Well, firstly, they were Christians. They were called by God, you know. Peter and and John, Peter was with, with Andrew, wasn't he? And he was casting his nets, and Jesus called him and said, follow me, and he did. And John the same, he was with James in, in a boat, and Jesus called them out of a boat, and he said, follow me, and they did. They were called, and they became Christians. They followed Christ. 
And they had a relationship with Jesus. Because the Sanhedrin recognized that. They recognized in verse 13 that they had been with Jesus. Have you been with Jesus today? So they were Christians. End of. That qualified to speak. As well as the Holy Spirit that was given to them. Verse 8, they were filled. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and he said to them, they hadn't been to Bible college, which is good. Don't get me wrong, but they hadn't been. They didn't have any formal theological training, which again is good. They hadn't had that. But they spoke because the Holy Spirit was within them. And if you're a Christian here this morning, then you have been called. You have had a conversion experience. There's been a time when you hadn't walked with God. And there's a time now in your life, God, and I trust God that it is, that you're walking with him. And if you haven't, then you need to repent today. And if you listen to this on the internet today, because we only know that you've got today. Now is the time. And there is no other name on the heaven by which you can be saved, and that's Jesus. So come to him if you haven't. But they were qualified because of their calling and their conversion experience and the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that is within you. Do you agree that you've got the Holy Spirit? You have. Ephesians 1, if you want a proof text, Ephesians 1 verse 13, in him where Paul says, in him also, when you heard the word of truth, have you heard the word of truth? Have you really heard the word of truth? Is it down deep in your heart when you've heard the word of truth? The gospel of your salvation, are you saved and believed in him? You were sealed with what? The promised Holy Spirit, the same spirit that was with Peter and John when they stood before the Sanhedrin, the same spirit that is with those pastors and their families and the Christians in Afghanistan now as they wait for the Taliban to knock on their doors. That same Holy Spirit is in our world today because there are Christians everywhere. The Spirit of God is working through them. So you are qualified if you are His and the Spirit is within you. If you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. You might not feel it on a day-to-day -day basis because our sin quenches the Spirit. But you have the Spirit. So you're qualified. You know, I've been a, a privileged, privilege to be a Christian now for 36 years. I, you know, you should know my story. I tell you it every week. <laughs> 1985, and you know, and 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 under Bill Bigelow's ministry, I was I was I was saved, and you know, and down through the years, I've watched many people, watched them witness and. There are a number of people that really stand out, one of which is a fiery Welsh woman. I've spoken about it in the past. Her name was Pat Griffiths. She went to be with the Lord a couple of years ago, and I was there at her funeral in this little Welsh chapel that was packed by the whole village because she had been, she had been such a great witness in the town. And, and I was a young Christian when we went to serve in South Wales in a place called Black Mill, and I watched Pat. And... Sometimes it was quite embarrassing because she'd be standing outside the chapel and someone would walk by and she'd say, excuse me. <laughs> and she would just open up about her story and she had such a powerful story. She'd been rescued out of alcohol. She'd been in a, a husband that had been very abusive. She used to sleep with a machete under her pillow because her husband was that bad. Hopefully that's not the case here. And then, and then, you know, her husband, she came home one day and her husband had hung himself and she'd, she'd gone through all of that. But, but one day as she was on her knees crying before the Lord because life was so bad, she just opened up the word of God. She had a copy of the Bible and she was soundly saved by the Holy Spirit by reading the book written by the Holy Spirit. And she couldn't help but speak. Joy filled her heart. I will never forget Pat. And there are many names 
that I could name. Some of you are here now who are never afraid to speak of Jesus. You see, we're commanded. We're compelled, aren't we? This is the second point. We're commanded and compelled. You know, Jesus said in the commandment in Acts 1, verse 8 that I read before, you will be my witnesses. And then we know the passage, don't we, in Matthew 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Go. It's, a, it's an action word, isn't it? Go. Don't sit on your hands and debate about it for weeks and weeks and weeks. Just get out there and go. That's what he says. It's a command. And Jesus said in, in John 14, verse 15, if you love me, you'll do as I say. You'll obey my commandments. You know, we obey lots of people, don't we? In COVID, we've, we've learned how to conform rightly to the authorities. You're all wearing masks rightly. We obey the authorities. We, we, we grow up in houses where most of the time we, we listen to our mums and dads, don't we? And, we? and we obey. Well, there are a few times that I've told you about where I did, did kick my dad in the shins, but that's another story. But on most of the time, we do obey. We listen to other people and we do what they say. You know, if Jill asks me to wash the dishes, I'll call our Laura. We, we, we listen to others, don't we? And, and, and be, often because we love them, we do what they say. How much more the words of Jesus? He was perfect. His words are always true. And if he says it, we're to do it. So if he commands us to go, then we're to go. And we're to go and tell. You know, there are some horrific stories coming out of Afghanistan. And I don't know about you, but I'm really convicted by the whole thing that's going on there. And I'm praying all the time for the folk. And you see those pictures of the kids outside the, the airport. And it's, it's harrowing. It's upsetting. And um, I was reading a story of, a, of an American journalist who, who managed to get through. And with, with her entourage of, of Afghan helpers that, that had served her during the time. And, but it was a harrowing journey to get through into the airport. And, and she was commending and praising British paratroopers. I don't know where the Americans were, but British paratroopers who'd gone outside the airport and formed a channel and were pulling people in. It was a narrow way, if you like. And she managed to get to the British soldiers and they pulled her in with the rest of her entourage. And she was praising, praising them. Do you know what? She will forever tell that story, won't she? It's impacted her life now and it will be impacting her life until the day she dies and she will tell it. It's a compelling story of salvation. If your heads, you have a compelling story of salvation. You're, you, you're his. And he loves you. And there's so much joy and peace to be found in him. And You know, Peter and, and, and John, they were stood before the Sanhedrin and they were telling him, be quiet. Don't speak of Jesus. And what did they say? Verse 20. We cannot but speak of what we've seen and heard. What have they seen? Wow, what have they seen? They'd seen, they'd, they'd seen the miracles. They'd, you know, they'd, they'd, they'd watched Jesus just walk on the water and Peter I love Peter I thought I'll have a go at this <laughs> and he stepped out of the boat didn't he and he started walking on the water because Jesus had called him they'd seen that so you know if you if you went down to the Mersey today and you 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 know all the crowd were watching you and you started walking across from 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 the pierhead to Birkenhead people would talk about it wouldn't they they'd talk about you because of what you'd seen, 
or, 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 or the guy, walk, if you'd have walked across, you'd have to say, look, in the name of Jesus, I walked across the water. So Peter couldn't keep quiet about that, could he? Could he? Okay, you are still with me. The miracles. You know, he'd watch Jesus go up to people, people who were blind, who'd never been able to see, and, and, and they could see again. He, he, they, were, they were lame. They could walk. They were deaf who could hear. They, there was dead that were raised. We've got three, three occasions in the Gospels where we read of Jesus raising the dead, and there would have been many more, but they just weren't written down. But, you know, Lazarus come forth. Lazarus who'd been dead for days, and he came out the tomb, and they had seen it. So you've got to speak, aren't you? Well, let me tell you, Sanhedrin, this is what we saw. And they saw him transfigured. They'd gone up a mountain, hadn't they? Peter, James, and John. They'd gone up a mountain, and Jesus had changed into this deity. They couldn't look upon him. He'd been transfigured, and they saw that he was God. You've got to speak about things like that, haven't you? And then they saw him crucified. And they knew it was an act of love for them, for you. They'd watch the sky go dark. They'd heard his words. It is. And there was earthquakes. And then three days later, this dead, crucified body that had been taken to the tomb was stood before them. He was alive. And that's why they've been preaching about it in the temple. We've seen him. He's alive. And then he ascended to heaven. And the Holy Spirit was sent, Acts chapter 2. And, and the, they were in the room when they were filled with the Spirit, these tongues of fire and like a gushing wind. And they'd been given the power, the power of the Spirit to speak. Same Spirit we are. And they'd heard, they'd seen all of this and they'd heard Jesus' words. They'd heard the authority of heaven speak the same words that we have here, heaven speaks. When you open the word, God speaks. So listen. And they were rejoicing in his words. Imagine Jesus. I mean, I often tell Jill I love her. I do, don't I? Yes, Rob is the answer you're looking for. Because I do. But I'm a sinner. It's all tarnished, isn't it? Because we're not perfect. But if Jesus came up to you, which he often did with Peter and John, and said, I love you. What an impact. And Jesus says that to you. I love. And you'll fully know that when you get there. But for now, we only see in part. But he loves you. And they had seen Jesus. They'd witnessed Jesus. They'd heard and what he'd said. And they had no choice but to speak. Do you know, we too, we might not have seen what we've heard. And Jesus said, blessed are those who haven't seen but hear. So you're blessed. You have seen with the eyes of faith and that's been granted to you. So, <laughs> And I've challenged you on this a few times over the years. Do you believe that Jesus did all this? It's like a, I'm waiting for an answer now. So why don't we speak of him as often as we should? Let's 
because we've got an enemy. It's because we're often not as bold as we should be. But he did all of these things. And if one of our family members had walked on water and healed someone and done all of this, we'd, we'd often go around saying, do you, know what our, do you know what our Fred did? So if we're saying that we believe that Jesus did all these things and he said all these things then, We should tell people. He's told us to tell people. You're here because someone told you. You're headed towards Jesus because someone told you. Do you know, all of us have a circle of influence. I've talked about this over the years. There are people in your lives that no one else in this local church has any association with. And, and you're called in that sphere of people to speak yes with how you live in love towards those people but also to tell them and to invite them to church to, 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 to bring them in under the sound of, of the gospel the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit that will pierce hearts so you have a circle of influence do you know, and it's been a privilege to watch people go out there and speak of Jesus in the seven years that I've been here. Mm -hmm. And it's good to know that Holiday Bible Club is going on again next week, praise the Lord, and that there'll be kids here, and the leaders will be speaking of Jesus, so please pray for them. And there'll be other works that are coming up that, that we need to be praying for. And praying for each other. that we would be given the courage. And that's what happened, you see. That's what was going on. While, while they were standing before the Sanhedrin, the prayers were going up for them. Let me just read the last part that hasn't been read yet. F open your Bibles back at tw verse 23. They've been released. They've been given a ticking off. And they were released because the people, you see, were a, the Sanhedrin were afraid of what the people would do because they'd, they'd, they'd seen what Peter and John could do. So they released them. So they went. When they were released, they went, Peter and John did, to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said, By the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city we were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus. They were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. Everything happens according to God. But then, verse 29, And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus and when they had prayed the place in which they were gathered together was shaken imagine that imagine if we were praying and all the walls started to shake it'd be great that wouldn't it might have a few repair bills on Monday, but it'd be great. Well, that's what happened. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. They prayed for boldness. They didn't pray for safety. They didn't pray that the persecution would stop. to speak and they went out 
and they spoke. So continue to speak, Bethel. And continue to pray for me as I speak wherever the Lord takes me and helps me and beyond. And remember that you are qualified. Remember that you're commanded by the one who loves you, who you love. And you're compelled because of what he's done. But you must remain prayerfully reliant. The prayer meeting is every Wednesday. Soon to be home groups, I think every other Wednesday. Is that right? Am I getting that right? No more important meeting. Pray for boldness. Pray for the Spirit of God to continue to move through your lives and into the lives of those who you influence and the lives of this church. So it has been a privilege to minister in the almost seven years that I've been here. It's been a privilege to speak of Jesus. Because it isn't about you or me. The reason we live is because he's given us life. So we make it all about him. His grace is amazing. And our chains are gone. And we are free to proclaim the great name of Jesus. Let's sing.
No, no. Not right, John. Yes, Rob is the answer you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Let's finish with the words of the Apostle Paul in prayer. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please be seated. So.